Okay, folks, we're here with Mike Brown. Mike, good to have you here. How you enjoy Poland? Great to be here. My first time. A lot of history and a uh, beautiful city, yeah. All right, good. Uh, how was today's seminar? Great turnout. Uh, I can see, uh, you know, r right away as I walked around, a lot of experience in the room, for sure. Good. So you came here to train with Joanna, right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. I'll be, I'll be here in, uh, in, I think, nine days, enjoying the city. You're obviously a great coach. Can you tell me more about your training routine with Joanna? Ah, well, you know, as of right now, it's a little bit seasonal. She's still here training in Poland sometimes. And, uh, you know, maybe three weeks, four weeks after a fight, she comes home and then uh, back back to American Top Team for, for her, her the bulk of her camps. And um, we have a whole team of coaches working with her, uh, Katel Kubis, uh, Steve Mako, and uh, many others. Uh, it's definitely a, a joint effort and uh, piece by piece she's growing and, and getting better all the time which is, which is saying a lot because she's already undefeated world champ uh, when she came to the gym so uh, she's definitely an impressive athlete. What is so unique about her? Mm, well I think um, mental toughness mm, really great I think uh, natural level of conditioning even uh, without training she, she has really good conditioning um, I mean that's that's it she's a great athlete mental toughness and, and great conditioning that's kind of everything she needs you know all, she's the complete package and what is different while training male and female fighters what is the main difference hmm I mean, well, main difference, I, I would say, used to be experience, but but now it's it's evening out quite a bit, especially with athletes like Joanna who have trained for years in, in another discipline. Uh, she's experienced uh, more than most of our, our men athletes and, and is technically better than most also. So with some, there is no difference. Joanna, next fight, um, probably Rose Namajunas. What do you think about her? I like the matchup. You know, I think uh, she's a, v a very tough competitor. Uh, she, um, with finals of the Ultimate Fighter, uh, she's uh, had a good amateur record. Uh, she's she's well rounded, but but I I, th I think uh, Joanna is, is is better everywhere, and I, and I think she also is a, um, much better conditioning, and I think she'll be able to. Um, break her down and, and really pull away uh, as the fight goes on. So you've got the game plan already? Um, Are you will tell me. Not com I mean, it's, it's always uh, piece by piece uh, work in progress, but we have some good ideas that I think that'll work. All right, good. Let's talk about the American top team and... Uh and you, uh, tell me, because many people are asking, what happened with Robbie Lawler, why he left? Yeah, yeah, I don't know all the details. I wish I knew that completely. You know, he's a he's a guy that's missed that, that uh, I would consider a friend. And mm, there's a, I don't know all the reasons why. I, am. I think it was some personal reasons. I think that um, you know maybe he just felt like he he needed a change to grow as a fighter. And I mean, sometimes uh, that helps a fighter. I mean, when when he came to AT. T ATT, I mean, he already had a load of experience, but that changed it a lot for him. He went on a nice run and became champion. Um, maybe he feels like he needs to shake it up and, and do something similar, you know. I, I don't know all the all the details, but he's, he's missed. Uh, the guys at the gym love him, and um, I'm, I'm not sure I know the answer. And you, did you miss competing? Uh, there's definitely there's parts that I miss and there's parts that I don't miss, you know. Uh, like what, tell me? You know, I, I miss the... the, the the, the hard training. I I, I love competing. Uh, you know that that being. I love being in like tip top shape, knowing you're at your absolute best. You know, uh, I you know I miss that feeling. You know, it's it's a high that there's there's nothing that replaces it. But you know, I, I it's, it's it's tough on the body. You know, I have a lot of injuries. You know, uh, I don't miss cutting weight. You know, there 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 are there are tough parts, but. There, there are parts I miss, but as each day that goes by, um, I'm more and more happy that I'm away. Is there any fight you still remember? Like one fight? Mm, I would say the fights that stand out mostly were, were the probably the 
the, the, all the, the WEC title fights, you know, the, the couple with Uriah, one with Leonard Garcia, and one with Aldo. Probably my most memorable fights, most famous and probably most memorable in my heart because those were at the time where uh, it was very, it was the most prestigious spot, uh, most prestigious title in the world at the time for, for, for that weight class. And at the time it was uh, really important to me. And, uh, so th those are the ones that they have like a special part in my heart. How much the game, the MMA, changed since that times? Yeah, uh, I mean it's it's changing all the time. It's changing uh, weekly, monthly, yearly, but it's changed quite a bit. Uh, I had my last fight August 2013, and what's that? Four or five years? Uh, changed quite a bit. You know, the the depth is it's, uh, the talent pool is much deeper. Uh, the they're very well rounded. The, the uh, there's a lot more movement, a lot more footwork, a lot more motion. Uh, there are techniques that are uh, are coming and going. I mean, it, it's it's always changing, but get, get guys are or fighters are, are much better now at, at uh, getting up, escaping. You know, there's not as much guard play as there used to be. You know, like trying to work from the guard these days is very difficult. You don't see that uh, too much, um, but it, it's changes it every day right it's it's, evol it's evolving as we speak but does it helps you to be an ex fighter like you know right now you're training young young people does it helps you i mean oh, yeah for sure i think uh, i mean there's there's uh, depths of knowledge it's knowing the the you know the details the intricacies the very small parts you know like uh, knowing when you have a feeling when you when you uh, you know use the techniques and, and, and have competed with them, you, you know, you have a deep understanding and, and knowing why something is not working. Maybe the smallest detail, uh, the technique is not working, you, you, you'll know why or why it wouldn't work for you. Uh, and I mean, I'm trying to stay up with it, you know, I, I try to still train and move around as much as I can and, 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 and keep evolving with the sport, but I mean, there's going to be a time and day when you know, as a coach you can no longer do that and you'll have to be a different type of coach you know maybe you know more of a, a vocal coach and more of a, a I, I don't know more cerebral than, than hands-on but uh, I, I do like the, the hands-on style speaking about being vocal you are very humble you are a very humble person and a fighter what do you think about persons like Conor McGregor or you know that kind of uh, you know fighters and and all that media stuff? Well, I mean, I think he's done a great job. It's, I mean, he's really, really literally changed the game. You know, he's the way he's uh, created uh, entertainment and and brought eyes. It's it, he's done a great job. You know, and I, I mean, I think it comes natural to him. I mean, may, maybe I would have done something like that if it if it came natural to me, but. <laughs> That, that wasn't my personality. I think he does it very well. And But you see a lot of people trying to copy Cat and do something similar. Uh, he's very unique and, and, he, and he does it well. Um, but there's there's more than one way to, to be uh, a world champion or be a popular fighter. Uh, you don't you don't have to, there's not only one path. You can create your own path or, or, or follow another one. Um, but I think it's it's good for the sport and, 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 he, and some of the stuff he's done is, is pretty amazing. He's fighting this Saturday. Uh, what you predict? I mean, I, I predict probably uh, the same result as most uh, Mayweather fights is a is a one-sided kind of uh, lackluster, monotonous decision. Every time I've bought a pay-per-view, I'm like, ah, oh, not again. You know, it's. Uh, He's very defensive, and he's hard to he's hard to hit and hard to hurt, and that's probably what's going to happen uh, again. You know, anything can happen, and of course, in the early rounds, um, McGregor will be dangerous, but it's it's hard to bet against uh, Mayweather. So, what advice would you give Connor? Yeah, I mean, he he's got a team of coaches, and he knows what he's doing, but uh, he knows what he has to do. Um, He's gonna do what he does, you know. Try to, he's gonna try to disrupt the rhythm and hit him with a big shot and and, and hurt him, you know. I, I think he can win by knockout. I mean, I don't think he can win by decision over, you know, over a longer period. It's just gonna be too tough to, to hit, 
Mayweather uh, consistently over time, but all he needs is you know one big shot, and uh, he definitely has the the power to do that. And, and uh, I sure will be watching. I'll be excited to see it. All right, Mike. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, man. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah.